Okay, so now we're going to attempt to do the mapping, but before we do, I just want to explain some of the nodes that we're going to be using in the mapping. So, let me see if we can zoom in here a little bit, and we'll just go from left to right here. So, the first thing we see here is the camera node. So, this is what's actually providing the RGB and depth images. And we see that it's transferring over here to the depth image to laser scan topic. And so that's what's generating our 2D laser scan. Um, over here to the right, we have the G mapping. That's what's actually going to be performing the SLAM. And it generates a map here. And it is fed by this EKF localization node, which feeds it the odometry filter topic and the EKF localization node is fed by the IMU topic and also the POST 2D topic, which the POST 2D topic is generated by the laser scan matcher topic. So, the other ones are more just transforms. This is just the visualization that we saw there, but that gives you an idea how everything kind of links together, and I'll explain it more in detail, I know <laughs> I'm not the best explainer, but um, at least you get an idea. So, moving on, so here it's actually starting to generate a map, and so this is its current position, it's just here stationary, and here's the map that it's trying to generate. So even moving, you can see that it's really erratic behavior, and that's just it trying to estimate a pose. And initially, when there's not a lot of information, such as when you start mapping, the pose estimate's kind of all over the place because it doesn't have a lot to go on. But in theory, as mapping continues, it should stabilize. So um, to perform this mapping experiment, what I'm gonna do is just basically move, swivel the chair from left to right, and trying to get a map of the room here. So bear with me and we'll go ahead and start that. I'm also going to go ahead and start a Ross bag recording of this. So we'll go ahead and do that first. It's nine o'clock. some battery issues so hopefully this doesn't crash <laughs> but um, we're going to go ahead and get into this screen here and then we're going to go ahead and start to move this chair so we're going to go a little forward a little this way and we're going to look screen so you can kind of see the right and get an idea from this part of the chair what direction we're trying to face. So I'm going to move it out just a little more, come out a little bit, and we're going to keep turning, turning, turning. And so basically, two things that I know that the mappings still continuing successful. One is this yellow line here. <laughs> Sorry, my hand just blocked this. So we'll zoom in. But you'll see the thing rotating is kind of tethered to that yellow line. So if that yellow line is present, I know that it's still continuing to map. But if I also go over to another window, this screen here also indicates that it's mapping. Now right now you see that it's hitting some errors there, but those errors are not errors related to the mapping, they're errors related to recording the ROS back, so it's some kind of conversion on the camera there. But the main thing I'm looking at is every once in a while you'll see a stream by, say, a odometry likelihood, 
that's the score of how successful it is in the SLAM algorithm. So if that drops to zero or gets a weird value, I'll also tell you that. Like I just saw one that said ICP failed. But this screen is usually pretty useful <laughs> when you're not recording a raw spec. So that's a little bit about that. But let's go back to the mapping screen. And so now we're going to rotate this a little the other way. yellow arrows that you're seeing there generating that's the actual like the odometry prediction so it's predicting that it's rotating but it's rotating in a circle so so far that's a pretty good prediction of the motion so now I'm actually gonna have to kind of go behind the chair to step out of the frame here so this is the position it's at now, so you kind of get an idea. We're just going to rotate the laptop this way. Okay. And we're just going to keep rotating it back the other way. We're rotating it the opposite direction. And we're going to kind of move it forward. Continue to rotate it. A little tricky video shooting here. So as we continue to rotate it, we're assuming that it's moving about on a 2D platform. And we see that it's starting to get the rectangular shape that we're hoping for to mirror the room. Now the map doesn't look really feasible to us. Or not feasible, but legible I would say, as far as the dimensions of the room. But what I've seen in other videos and in other research the map doesn't always because this doesn't have loop closure so the map is going to look a little skewed but mainly what we want to target now is to see whether or not this map's useful in localization and um, specifically ACML localization and the ACML being for Monte Carlo localization so that will be the next attempt but um, so far it's fairly robust. Before, if we were to do this experiment with the old algorithm, this turning nature would surely crash the algorithm. But here, even though it gets off track, like here it's off track quite a bit, it recovers fairly easily. So it looks like my battery is going to die. Here. Try to change the focus. Sorry again for these crazy camera angles. Just trying to do this on the fly. So, this is the map we have so far. We have, let's see, there we go. So, basically, what we're concerned with next is if I move the robot here and I'm using localization with this particular map, does the robot or does the algorithm know that I'm there? So that's what we're going to be testing next. But so far, as far as mapping, I think we're okay on the 2D aspect. 
I'm still working on getting this system to integrate with our tab map. Um, but that may or may not be an issue at this point. So thank you for watching. <laughs> Hope you didn't get motion sickness. See you next time.